Beautiful afternoon here in South Texas. A little chilly, got a north wind coming. But hey, almost golden hour, out on the bike. Got breath in my lungs. Got about an hour and a half on the cards. Let's get it. So I rode yesterday and put some tow covers on. It was definitely colder yesterday than today. I might not have needed them today, but you can never go wrong with toasty toes, right? So one thing I like to tell my students all the time is that what you believe about the future affects how you live in the present. At least it should, right? So I say to them, hey, what if I told you, sit here in this coffee shop or here in my living room or wherever for the next 12 hours. And when I come back, I'll give you a prize. I say, hey, how motivated are you to sit here for the next 12 hours? And they go, eh, not very. And then I say, hey, sit here for the next 12 hours. And when I come back, I'll give you a million dollars. And I say, hey, how motivated are you now to sit here for the next 12 hours? And they, they say, well, a little bit more motivated. And I say, why? Well, because the prize is clearer. It's more defined. Then I ask them again, I say, sit here for the next 12 hours and when I come back, I'll give you a million dollars. Oh, and by the way, see that piece of paper that's on the table? Yeah, that's the names of all the people I've ever given a million dollars to. You can call them up, FaceTime them, send them a text, whatever, ask to see their bank account, and that's proof. The proof that I'm gonna give you a million dollars when I come back. So how motivated would you be, I ask them, to sit here for the next 12 hours? And they go, oh man, very. And so the question would be, why is that? Why are they more motivated when I say a million dollars and proof as opposed to just a prize. Well, because the prize is clear and defined. In other words, what you think about the future should affect and change the way you live in the present. You're gonna sit there if you know the million dollars is really coming. Of course, that's a fictitious story. I don't have a million dollars to give students, <laughs> but I think you get my point, right? And so the point is when there's evidence, when there's proof, when there's clarity in terms of what that prize actually is, you're gonna be more motivated. You say, okay, my friends are gonna call me up, say, hey, where are you? We are supposed to go get some food or whatever. Like, you said you are gonna come over and do homework with us. Trust me. It's worth it. I'll be back in 12 hours and I've got something that'll change everything. Man, clarity about the future changes the way you live in the present. Shouldn't this be even more true for someone who says they follow Jesus and call themselves his disciple that what we believe about the future should affect the way we live in the present, right? Like if Jesus is really gonna return, as he said, if God is really gonna raise the dead and he's appointed him to be the judge of the living and the dead, that day is really coming when the earth is gonna be restored. Man, if that's really true, shouldn't it affect the way we live in the present? Of course it should. Not only does a follower of Jesus have 
the promise of those things yet to come, but we have the proof. God has raised Jesus from the dead. It's reliable, historical proof that God intends to really do what he said. Not only that, I mean, you look throughout history, the prophecies, the, the way the prophets have spoken over and over and over again, and how God has been trustworthy and reliable to do everything he said so far. I would have to say that this very thing, more than anything, is what strengthened my commitment to Jesus as a disciple and just my desire to make him known and make what he's promised known more than anything else. It's what he's promised for the future and how that affects how I should live in the present. And you know, in many years now as a pastor, talking to disciples who always seem to struggle with walking like Jesus to walking in forgiveness or reading their Bible or, you know, praying or being involved in a community with other believers, just seeking to walk in humility, all of those things, and they're struggling. And so I inevitably ask them, I say, so where do you think this is headed? What do you think about the future? How often are you pondering and meditating what the Bible actually says about where this is going? And sadly, the picture is often nebulous, ambiguous, vague, unclear. And that's such a bummer. So if you find yourself in that place that, you know, no motivation to walk uprightly and walk in holiness, no motivation to open your Bible, man, what you need to do, fight for clarity from the scriptures about the future. What does the Bible really say? So this is something I want to come back to over and over and over again on these videos because for a disciple of Jesus, what we believe about the future, what we're actually looking forward to is the fuel for how we should live in the present. So if this is helpful, like and subscribe. It's getting a little chilly, the sun's about to go down. I'm about 10 minutes from home. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.